Today I am watching the 1972 film Slaughterhouse 5. It's a Patreon sponsored film, so thank you so much for sponsoring this video. I know it's a book. I haven't read the book. I don't know what the book is about. I just know it is a book. Um, so I'm very curious if you have read the book. Is this movie close to the book? I've heard it's a classic book that everybody should read, so I definitely need to check it out. I don't know the cast, the director, anything like that. I don't really know what to guess off the title. It sounds pretty dark, so I'm curious curious to see what this is about but thank you so much for sharing in this first time watching with me if you have any other suggestions for movies or tv shows you think i should watch please comment below and if you want to have a say in what i watch be sure to join patreon and as always please like comment and subscribe to this channel and check back often for more awesome content Unstuck in time. Okay, so more like sci-fi elements, some time travel involved. Okay, interesting. I have no control over where I am. I jump back and forth. That would be insane. What? This definitely sounds like a book I need to read. This sounds awesome and terrifying. Yeah, now suddenly he's in the forest during I'm um, Second World War, maybe first. I don't recognize any of the cast so far. Yeah, and he went from a time in his life when he was a dad and, you know, was writing to some newspaper or something. He said letters to the editor and now suddenly he's transported back to when he's younger. I don't know what country this is or anything, but obviously a very different time, so... Yeah, and the fact that he has no control over it, like other uh, time travel based uh, movies that I've seen, it's like a portal or something that triggers them. This just seems to be random. There doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason why he is, you know, sent back and forward in time, which would be incredibly frustrating. And how do you function? Like, that's crazy. was on a different planet this morning oh with a friend oh my hello friend oh and now back to writing okay why am i car being three times spaced you got it got it yeah they're like asking him questions about current events he's like what do i do memorize the war weren't you time travels a bitch for you isn't it i think that's fair yeah i think that would be an unpleasant memory to visit <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Leah! Oh, 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 oh. This is not looking good. If he dies in the past, what happens? <laughs> yeah, what, yeah, what happens if he dies during one of these adventures? Big smile now. Big smile. Yeah, handle, handle. Why are they taking pictures of the POW before they shoot him? What? And then he's like having flashbacks to opening this pilgrim building or something. And it looks like they use the same actor, just, you know, altered him to look older or younger. So bad. There are plenty of worse places. Plenty of worse places. He's like, no, I don't want to go to anywhere worse. The only thing that's kind of coming to mind optometry school when this happened is a book called The Shining Girls, which is going to be turned into a show, but this guy can go into a house and transport through time. He's also building a brand new home for them out on the lake for a wedding present. That's the house we saw at the beginning. The war is over. You can come out now. Oh, God. You call my mom and dad in Pittsburgh, see? You tell them I died and that you killed me. I think you were dead long before Billy stepped on your foot there, bud. Thing in the world. It's revenge. My God, this guy is, that's the last thing he told this man while he's dying. It was a story of how he murdered this dog through torture with a spring. Cheese and rice, this guy's twisted. Oh my God, that's horrible. I assume that this has had a contributing effect on his present condition. He's ready, Doctor. Does this affect his time travel? Like the fact that he had obviously some severe PTSD after the war and they gave him shock treatment. Is that why he can travel back and forth? Yeah, 
Yeah, it's crazy to just think that he's like floating aimlessly through time and does he relive the same memories over and over or does every time he go back, you know, it's a new memory. Just a really cool idea for a movie and a book. I know Dresden's an actual city in Germany. Lazaro. Was it ever actually bombed? Comment below and let me know. Yes, since I was taken prisoner, true of most of us here. We haven't seen a woman or a child in all of that time. Think about that for a minute. Oh God, that's horrible. A deal of self-respect and survive. Do you think you can do it? And he falls asleep in his soup. He's like, yeah, I might not be able to control this crazy war, but I can control these few things. Oh, the puppy just wants to say hello. Right That's crazy how his mind just goes back and forth like this, and I'm curious what his... While he's in the past, what his present body or mind is doing. Be right in! Spot, sit up. Oh, Spot! Oh, he's my favorite so far. He's like, I don't care about the baby, show him what the dog can do. Oh, roll over! Carpets, two pairs of shoes, he's driving me crazy! For true love. To have the difference between like these very terrifying war memories and then these happy memories, you know, the birth of his child and playing with his dog and okay. just having those like back to back. Spot's like, I don't like this, whatever it is, get away from me. Yeah, I'm curious if they'll ever explain how he can travel through time. Oh, Pop. Huh? You tell him what happens. Nobody f***ing out with Paul Lazaro. You tell him! That's putting it mildly, yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. You got a girl back home? No one's special. Didn't Billy's mom say he was engaged? Or maybe that was after the war he became engaged? Yeah, gave me these boots, wife. Don't mind the silver paint. They did that for a skit they were putting out of our Cinderella. <laughs> okay. There was a lot of singing and dancing, crazy stuff, you know. I admire the English, you know. Seems like they put on quite a few musical numbers. Keep themselves going, you know, putting on shows and Gilbert and selling... What's this? He just has a diamond with him that he carries? Billy's too modest, but I'll tell you. When he was a prisoner in this dreadful... Good boy, Billy. Oh, he found it in the coat? Or is it, I guess, uh, Derby found it in the coat. He probably didn't even know it was there. The one that was killed in Dresden. Edgar Derby. Oh, that's right. Oh, no. What was it, Billy? Well, anyway, before that... That's awful. Oh, it's hard going back and then you know the character dies and you see them and they're just like so sweet. Oh, man. The audience knows more than the characters. Because oh. when I broke the lock last time I locked it, that's why. Can I have any privacy? What have you got? Billy looks like two years older than his son. Oh, Billy. Is that the girl from the planet? It kind of looks like her. Hey, Paul Lazaro. Lazaro, right. Anyone else? He can't. He's the worst. He can't be their leader. He'll get them all killed. Shut up, will you? He's like, I don't want this, but somebody has to be in charge, so... Yeah, and just the way they're cutting back and forth again. Both. Oh. Is my bath ready, Silvio? Yes, miss. Movie within a movie? What movie is this? Billy, take us home! I don't want to hear another word out of you. Can you hear me? Shit. He's like, I want to visit my other planetary lady friend at the movies. <laughs> He's like, she's talking just to me. Yeah, <laughs> see this later. Dresda's never been bombed because it isn't a military target, so we'll be safe there. Oh, now they won't. And tell him I know we'll all be back together again soon. Tell him how proud I am of him. Yeah, it sounds like it's just a civilian town. Like, there's not any manufacturing for the war or anything like that. They said it was an open city, so... Billy, what are we going to say to the McNallys? Mr. Pilgrim, if I could see you up here for a moment, sir. Robert's acting out. Oh, my. Knocking over tombstones. That's horrible. You must be the greatest father in the world. Aw. I can't imagine how that would be, You're just having these POWs walk through the streets and seeing terrifying Nazi youth. home and wanted to marry you. To tell you the honest to God truth, I thought you brought home a first-class loser. Well, this is rude and awkward. I 
that's his dad? We know his dad died while he was enlisted? I don't know what he was wearing? Like a ski mask or something? The plane's gonna crash. Oh god. Hey stewardess, bring this young fellow another drink! Yeah. He's like, I don't think it's a joke, I think it's gonna happen. I just need to time travel out of here before it happens? I don't know. Schlachthof 5. This is Schlachthof 5. Does that translate to Slaughterhouse 5? Slaughterhof is house. Schlachthof 5. Slaughterhouse 5. Hey, that's the name of the movie. Oh my gosh. Oh, the plane crash. Oh, he was seeing the rescuers? Schlacht. He survives the world war. POW. He survives a plane crash. Oh god. Oh my god. Yeah, and like the non-linear storyline is- Oh god. It's interesting, but it's still easy to follow. Oh god, and of course the cars are all giant. Oh my god! This is chaos. She's gotta get to that hospital in Vermont. Trunks be damned. Where we're going, we don't need roads. Oh god, just over the hill. Whoop, <laughs> bye! Golden thread. <gasps> so that's at the cattle like she's destroying on a rampage to the hospital. Should we need a new Cadillac for sure? Oh my god, she's gonna need to be a good thing she's at the hospital. She's gonna need medical attention. Yeah, exactly. She just crashed in. Oh my god. And of course he passes her on the other way. Oh, is that the same hospital? They don't even know Sorry. it. Yes, doctor. Better get in as quickly as you can. Oh god. Watch the light. Scalpel. Oh shoot. See how obviously- Oh god! Ugh, I'm glad they cut there. I seems like their other camp they were in was a lot better, seemed to be cleaner, and they had more resources. Are those tiny Ferro Rochers? And they said that that she died about three hours ago. Oh my god. She was. Can you imagine? Oh my god. She literally crashed into the hospital going to see him and she dies. She drives a Cadillac. Honey, I she... don't know. That's what they told me. I feel like there was like a door missing. How did she get what? I'm guessing Billy's the only one who survived that plane crash. Oh my gosh. So yeah, he can also predict things like he was able to see those skiers before it happened. They're given the date and time, which makes me think this is when the bombing's gonna happen. And especially so close, like this is February and the war ended April, May-ish, something like that, if I'm remembering correctly, so... And 135,000 people dying in Dresden does not seem so very much... Was that many? Oh my god. Millions. Those masks are terrifying. So they bombed the whole city, not just like the POW camp? I know the city's in the camp, or the camp is in the city, but still, it was just like, they obviously knew that they were gonna hurt more than just POWs. Oh my god, that's horrible. Oh shit. And they all thought Dresden was so safe, and those very much bombs dropping. That's terrifying. I so horrible. You've got your whole life ahead of you. Good night, dear. Is he supposed to be like 40 ish? Yeah. It's definitely an interesting way to get to know a character and we're seeing like major events throughout his life, obviously, but and out of order, but it's still an interesting way to tell a story. That's crazy. There's like nothing left. Everything is burnt out and destroyed and completely gone. Yeah, he's like, you know what? Forget this. I'm gonna go check on my family. No, no. Oh 
Oh my gosh, that's horrible. Hi, Dan. His son's in the army now? I'm not ready yet. Well, I know how you feel, Dan. Yeah, he keeps seeing this thing, like this glowing light come towards him. Is this what, like, takes him to that other planet? And I thought he was existing in both times at the same time, if that makes sense. This seems to be like he's actually taken away from present on whatever this is. And they brought Spot with him. Yay! There is no how, Mr. Pilgrim. There is no why. The moment simply is. Okay. Okay, that answers that. Is here suitable? I have to stay here? I'm afraid so. Is he dead? Only on Earth. Is there any talk of free will? He's just stuck in this, like, geodome on this planet? Forever? And he can't leave? What? Is this, like, their way of saying he's died? He's so egocentric, Mr. Pilgrim. We know how the world ends, and it has nothing to do with Earth. All right, well, that answers that. The test pilot panics, presses the wrong button, and the whole universe disappears. Makes sense to me. It's always, you know, human error. Oh, my God. And he always will. We always let him. And we always will let him. He has free will. Is to ignore the bad times and concentrate on the good. Oh, my. They brought in his favorite movie star. Well, I don't know because we can't leave the dome. The atmosphere of Tralfamador is cyanide. It would Great. Yep, that's horrible. I don't know. You are here. You have always been here. And you will always be here. It's very Matrix response of them. No, no, no. It all makes sense in a way. You see in Tralfamador... Would you please mate look... now? He's really into watching the mate, which is super creepy. He's like, also, my wife just died? To bring a needle and thread. Did you hear that? And remember, Miss Wildhack is used to the best. He's like, if you're going to be stuck with me, we better have nice clothes. Now we would like the night canopy. Why do you wish the night canopy? Because we want it. So you can't watch us, you creep. It's pretty comfortable, isn't it? Fine. They got everything from Sears and Roebuck. <laughs> Tometrist. Oh. Would you like to kiss me? Oh my. Guess the getting to know you phase is over. Good thing it has that night canopy. Really? Is this what gets him shot? They said no looting. Little dancers survived all this destruction. <sighs> Where will I bring it home? They're gonna shoot you. Meg's eyes will light up. This is what's gonna happen. It's pretty, isn't it? We had one. Up here, she exactly like. Right, Malcolm. Used to sit on the living. Oh my God! No! 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 Let me know. Yeah, from the I thought they meant like taking stuff off of people's bodies. <gasps> Stop! <gasps> oh my god, that's horrible. She died. Somebody smacked into the rear of her car and the exhaust fell off. Oh, from the accident. We could think about having your baby. In this planet? How's that gonna work? This dome's gonna get crowded. Canopy, please. <laughs> Very busy. Montana's pregnant. He's just crazy. He's got his intergalactic space girlfriend pregnant. Wives and children. It's time for me to be dead. Is this Paul? Paul Lazo? Hello. Farewell. Why aren't these guys getting shot? They're definitely looting. Come on. They're taking an entire grandfather clock. Guys, if we don't steal it, the Russians will. Oh my god, I just leave them holding this clock. Still can't believe they shot Derby over that little porcelain figurine. The Russians are like, here, have some vodka. I'm assuming the war is over at this point. I don't know. I don't know. Like, oh, we'll leave you under this clock. You know, thanks for the vodka, but uh, see you later. There's definitely been some comedic elements in this too, which is which is nice. Everybody's just like waving and cheering. Oh my gosh. 
The entire planet's celebrating now. So that was my first time watching the 1972 Patreon-sponsored film Slaughterhouse Five. I really enjoyed it. Definitely my type of movie. A little bit of sci-fi, some history. It was really interesting. I definitely need to read the book and find out more about this author and what other books they've created. Because yeah, this was definitely a movie I enjoyed. I know this came out a while ago. I don't know if there are sequels or remakes or anything like that, but comment below and let me know if you think I should watch those. I don't know how this version would would compare against them. This is the only version I've seen of this movie. I can definitely see why this book and movie would be considered a classic. I feel like there's lots of layers to this and lots of things you could look into. I love history so it was very interesting to see this war aspect. I wasn't expecting that at all and the fact that Dresden was bombed. I hadn't heard of that before and I don't know if that's actually what happened. I'll have to look it up now that I finished watching but that was interesting and the fact that our main character is a POW. I definitely was wasn't expecting any sci-fi to be involved in the fact that Billy can time travel back and forth and we never really find out why and that didn't really bother me. I was like okay I feel like there's a lot going on here already. We don't really need to deep dive into why. Maybe they explain it in the book. I'm not too sure but I don't feel like the why is necessary. We just kind of accept that he has this ability to time travel. There might be a couple pieces from the movie that you could say okay maybe this gave him the ability like when he was recovering from his PTSD and they start giving him shock therapy. Maybe that had something to do with it. I have no idea, but nobody else he meets seems to have this ability to travel back and forth. And like I said, in other sci-fi movies, you know, there's a portal or there's something that triggers it. This seemed to be sometimes a memory would trigger it, but he also didn't seem to have any control over it. It's not like, okay, I just won't go near this one area or whatever, and then I won't time travel. So that was interesting. The fact that he could just at any moment basically called it being unstuck in time. He's just kind of floating around. And he mentioned he got to go to the future. We didn't get to see any of those memories. And maybe in the book, he travels to other places as well. But the three main points of time we got to see were when he was in the war and present day. I think they said it was in New York and then also on this other planet. So it was interesting to have those three kind of as our like main points from storytelling even though it was non-linear. As a viewer it still felt easy to follow what was going on and you weren't like okay where are we? What, what are we doing? Maybe the book is like that. I'm not too sure but uh, and obviously we have the visual element of it being the film as well. So you're like okay Billy is younger. He's in his army uniform. Clearly this is the time we're in. I don't know how descriptive that section would be or if it would just be all first person. I have no idea. And maybe watching this makes it easier to read the book because you have those visuals to go along with it. I didn't recognize the cast or the director or anything. So comment below uh, what I know them from anything. I really enjoyed their performances and especially Billy. They definitely had the same actor throughout the entire movie and they didn't hire like an older version or, you know, a younger version. They just made him look or tried to make him look older. I mean, if you want to poke holes at I mean, he definitely didn't look old enough to be, you know, the father of Robert or Barbara like he looks like he was still you know in his early 20s and is trying to play their father I know they tried to like change his hair and stuff like that you know gave him the glasses but that didn't take me out of the experience I just you know we assume that he's at that age now there was definitely some comedic elements throughout as well which I really enjoyed and I feel like you needed because it was at times very dark and very heavy subject matter and you know even that scene at the end where Billy's stuck under the clock and you know everybody comes up to him but doesn't rescue him they just leave them there and I thought that was funny and there was a few other lines and situations that they added comedy into and I don't know again if that's for the book if they did that for the movie but either way I enjoyed it as a viewer it definitely helped things as obviously like I said this could have been seemed very dark and very dramatic and very heavy it felt heartwarming at times considering everything that was going on and even Billy's kind of perspective on it he's like you know what like I've been to this other planet the way they view things is kind of how I I've adapted my view of the world and this is just kind of random moments strung together. It felt very much like the Matrix in that sense. And even the fact that he's seen his own death, he knows how it's going to happen. You know, even when he's on that planet, they tell him how the end of the world happens basically because a pilot presses the wrong button. And of course, that's what would be the downfall of, you know, the universe as we know it basically. So the fact that Billy still goes through with his plan and he's like, I know what's going to be in this place this day when I'm giving this speech, you know, with Paul. Of course, it's Paul like this jerk throughout the entire movie is the one who kills Billy in the end and Billy could have made another choice to go somewhere else and do something different but he didn't. Billy doesn't view dying as 
the end, it seems like. Even when he's on that other planet, their greeting is hello, farewell, hello, farewell. Like arrival and departure seem to have the same consequence. It doesn't seem to have the weight of, you know, someone dying or like the significance of someone dying on Earth. So I feel like he just kind of accepted his fate and he's like, yeah, this is how I'm meant to go. So I'm not going to mess with it and I'm just going to let it happen. I thought maybe he had died when they had pulled him from that like glowing ball and sent him to the planet. I was like, okay, maybe this is it. Maybe this is him dying. You know, he's leaving Earth completely, but then he somehow goes back and forth again. So yeah, it was really interesting. Just a really cool concept for a movie and a book. And Billy's life is full of tragedies and these horrible events from the war. And somehow he survives everything until obviously Paul shoots him at the end. But you know, he survives these bombings in Dresden. He survives the war. He survives that plane crash and was able to predict the plane crash. I don't know if that was part of his, you know, time traveling abilities is maybe he had been there before and remembered that at some point these skiers were going to find him. And all the while people in his life that he cares about, you know, his wife dies from carbon monoxide poisoning and his dad dies while he's enlisted and Derby, somebody who, you know, was his friend and possibly even a father figure during the war, gets shot trying to steal this like figurine. And that was, oh, that was so gut wrenching. And just, he was so excited about it. And he's like, oh, we used to have one of these at home, but my son broke it. And now my wife will be so excited because I get to, you know, bring it home again. And they did say, you know, looting would be met with a firing squad. But in my mind, that meant like looting off of people's bodies because that's disgusting and horrible. And this seemed more like he just found something like a shop that would have sold these figurines was bombed and he somehow managed to find one. Or maybe it was somebody's house. We don't know. It was just so heart wrenching because you're getting to the end and, you know, they're wrapping things up and the audience has been told that, you know, he dies and he's shot and we don't find out what happens. So they kind of leave that element of suspense as we have you know Billy and his wife talking back and forth at an earlier scene like oh what happened like why was he killed again and Billy's just still like haunted by that clearly and it was just such a horrible scene to witness and it's especially painful considering that bombing was in February of 1945 and the war would have been over you know in a matter of months and he was so close to making it home and it's just like oh so painful to see that and even Billy's last name being Pilgrim and if you wanted to read into that you know Pilgrims were known as being settlers and maybe Billy is the first of this kind to be able to travel to this planet and start to repopulate over there and him and Montana are now in this dome with their child like maybe they'd become pilgrims and settlers on that planet so yeah just really interesting I feel like everything in this was done intentionally and I'm very curious to read the book and see how it compares and maybe there's details in the book or maybe different variations of things I know sometimes in movies they make minor alterations because it's easier to film that way as opposed to what the book strictly says I'd be very curious to find out how the author feels about this movie and I don't know when the book came out either if this was written ages ago and then the movie came out like 50 years later maybe the author wasn't even around I'm not too sure but yeah very interesting to see as it's obviously an adaptation of someone's work and trying to cross over a book from the written page to the screen sometimes it works really well sometimes not so much I loved how they were able to use the power of editing and have scenes cut back and forth as we saw like a similar movement or a similar action between present and past versions of Billy if it was you know a camera flash he would go back from when it's being taken in his photo of POW and then to when it looked like he was opening an optometry clinic or something like that, you know, a memory from the future. And then even when he's, you know, walking or opening a door and they have those scenes cut back and forth and it kind of just really emphasizes that, you know, he's traveling back in time. And I just feel like that was a good visual way to represent Billy kind of floating, you know, being unstuck as he calls it in time. And he's not permanently in one moment, you know, in a linear way. And then the next day progresses to the next and the next, you know, the next day could be back in 1945 and then the next day could be on this planet. So it was really interesting. And I love that they use those storytelling techniques uh, to help convey that. I wonder what Billy was like when he's in the present, but 
in the past, if he's just mentally in the past and like reliving these memories, if his whole body is gone and he's, you know, fully living in the past now. I don't know if that's explored in the book, but I feel like his family would get suspicious if he was gone completely. But again, they said that Montana girl had been missing and they thought she had disappeared. So she was obviously physically taken from Earth and brought up to this other planet. So maybe when Billy is going to the past, he is physically gone. But I feel like there was also a few times when he was talking and Montana says, oh, you were time traveling again. And I feel like he was just maybe like literally spaced out and just looking, you know, off in the distance or something and wasn't really responding. So, yeah, it would be very interesting to see what that looked like and how those transformations affected him. I'm also guessing that he only goes back into existing memories. He's not creating new ones. Like when he travels back in time, he's only traveling back to moments that have already existed in his life. He's not making new memories and he also doesn't seem to be altering history or altering fate. Billy knows that Derby is going to die, but when he transports back in time to the war, maybe he doesn't have his present day memories with him. I'm not too sure. He doesn't stop it. He doesn't intervene. He doesn't prevent Derby from being killed. So that's interesting. But when he's in the future, he obviously has his past memories as you would in real life. And he's not going around to, you know, these soldiers and comrades and people that he's, you know, battling with and saying like, okay, well, you know, invest in Apple or like something like that or trying to be like, okay, this team's going to win the World Series in 10 years. Bet on them or like something like that. And and I like that they didn't do that. I feel like Billy's character was genuine throughout the entire movie and to have him go back and start doing those things I feel like would have changed his motives and then there would have been situations where you know different versions of that situation like one version where Derby lives and another one where he doesn't and what does that look like and starts messing with time all over the place which is messy. It's interesting how Billy adopts this mentality of after he visits the planet of you know only focusing on the good memories and ignoring the bad even though it seems like he spends a lot of his time traveling time in these bad memories of being in the war so that was interesting and might not be the most healthiest of way of processing things to just ignore bad memories entirely it definitely felt like he was suffering from PTSD after the war so I'm very curious how much that plays into the book at first it seemed like all of his good memories were in the future and all of the bad memories were in the past you know in the future he's playing with spot in the backyard and you know having this good time and it didn't seem like him and his wife were particularly close like we didn't have a ton of scenes with them but he definitely you know treated her nicely and seemed to care about her but uh, yeah I don't know what their relationship was really like it just kind of seemed like we only saw you know certain events like we saw their wedding night and you know anniversaries and stuff like that and then even when he develops a relationship with Montana and he's like you know we need to bring her the finest clothes and it just seemed very creepy the way the guy who's like narrating this planet was like oh are you mating now like let's mate like have you done it yet like it just felt very like why are you so interested in watching the mate like it just felt creepy and weird but maybe from his perspective it was strictly like scientific or curious or like a research perspective I don't know but it felt very strange I was wondering what would happen if Billy would have died in one of his past memories but that wouldn't be possible because he's alive in the future so he can't die in the past even when he's time traveling back it seems like he's just reliving the same memory so if he survived you know the war the first time he would survive it when he visits that memory again. In other sci-fi movies I've seen that concept where you know if you travel in time and you die during that time travel you know you die where you are currently or whatever something like that so that's why I was wondering and it's always interesting to see in the genres what lore or what rules basically are brought over between each movie. Maybe Billy's time in this dome on this other planet is supposed to represent you know if some other species came to earth how we would treat them maybe we would stick them in a dome and basically say like hey we're gonna not let you out and of course this planet's air is cyanide like he couldn't escape even if he wanted to he wouldn't last a second and then they bring in a mate for him and they're like okay like what are you gonna do now like it definitely felt like they were trying to just observe his species and they said they had visited you know hundreds of different planets and he's like every time we do this experiment you know your planet is the only one who's concerned about free will everybody else just does what they're told basically I thought it was interesting how they had Billy's son Robert joined the army and it sounds like he was heading off to war shortly as well and I wonder how Billy felt about that. It seemed like he was proud of his son for you know it sounds like he had a rough teenage years and has now picked a path that he wants to pursue but still I feel like 
since Billy had experienced that war, I don't know that he would want his son to go through it. And then especially when he has another son with Montana. Yeah, so it was very interesting to kind of see that dynamic and what that like father son role would be. And especially since we never got to see Billy's father and how Derby was Billy's father figure in the war. And then he ends up being shot and killed as well. Overall, I really enjoyed it. I feel like this is a movie you could talk about for days and pick things apart. And which is I love that's definitely my kind of movie one that you can critique and you know go through all the layers and find meanings. I liked the non-linear storyline. I found it was still relatively easy to follow along. You were like okay what's happening and maybe if they had traveled to different places it would have been more confusing but we had our three main places basically that he traveled between and I'd be very curious to find out in the book if he travels further. I thought they did a good job of showing that you know time travel through visual storytelling through editing and all of those factors in the movie. I feel like that really helped take the viewer into that experience and remind us that you know Billy's kind of in two places at once or he's you know traveling and not really stuck in one place at a time and I love how they also gave Billy the ability to predict the future a little bit maybe inadvertently as well even when he's on the plane he's trying to tell everybody we got to get off there's a plane crash and then we do unfortunately see the plane crash but Billy survives did he survive because he predicted it what does that look like and unfortunately when his wife dies he's the one who bought her the car so did he play a role in that inadvertently somehow like if he had bought her a different car or you know he was in the plane crash she was coming to see him and Derby was so excited to show him this little figurine and that's what the German officers see and that's what you know ultimately leads to Derby being killed maybe he would have shown somebody else again this is just obviously you know a theory and speculation as someone who can travel through time it's interesting to see what role he's obviously Obviously played in other people's lives and it was just such a creative way to tell this character story and I feel like we really got to know Billy as a character he's obviously our main character throughout the movie and we've got to see some very significant points in his life so I really enjoyed it I enjoyed the performances I like the historical aspects I like the sci-fi elements overall I just thought it was really well done a really cool movie I'm definitely excited to learn more about it but thank you so much for sharing in this first time watching with me if you have any other suggestions for movies you think I should watch please comment Comment below and thank you so much for sponsoring this patreon video and as always please like comment and subscribe to this channel and check back often for more awesome content unstuck in time he was on a different planet this morning why are they taking pictures of the pow and he falls asleep in his soup seems like they put on quite a few musical numbers he's like i want to visit my other planetary lady friend at the movies so that's at the cadillac she's destroying on a rampage to the hospital yeah, he keeps seeing this thing like this glowing light come towards him